Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Every American is born with inherent rights. That's what our founding documents say. And the purpose of the U.S. government is to protect those rights. That has been our national creed for hundreds of years, and it's worked. But the left no longer believes it. Progressives have decided that the Bill of Rights applies only to people who agree with them. Their views are protected by the First Amendment. Your views are hate speech. The Second Amendment covers their security detail. You can't be trusted to have a gun at home. Now the activist left is telling us that people who disagree with them no longer have freedom of movement or association. They can't go to the movies or go to restaurants. If they dare leave their homes, they will be surrounded by mobs and threatened. It's happening. Last Friday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders and her family were forced to leave a restaurant in Virginia because the owner didn't like their politics. Sanders and her husband went home, but the rest of their family went to another restaurant. That wasn't good enough. They had committed the sin of being related to someone who works at the White House. So progressives continued to harangue them as they tried to eat. This is happening in a lot of places to a lot of people. Protesters, for example, have massed outside the home of White House aide Stephen Miller. In case their intentions weren't clear enough, they put up mock wanted posters with Miller's face on them. A DHS employee, meanwhile, found a burned, decapitated animal carcass on his front porch. Again, the message is crystal clear. Activists on the left are moving toward violence. They are aware of this, and some applaud it. A piece yesterday in Splinter News, which is owned by Univision, explained that intimidating Trump supporters in public places is, quote, just the minimum baseline here. This is all going to get more extreme, and it should, end quote. How extreme? Well, the article fondly recalls the domestic terror bombings of the 1970s, thousands a year in America. That's our future, the article says. Unfortunately, we're headed there fast. Over the weekend in Los Angeles, Congressman Maxine Waters urged the mob to hunt down and find members of the president's cabinet. Here's part of it. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Already, you have members of your cabinet uh, that are being booed out of restaurants. Who have protesters taking up at their house. He's saying no peace, no sleep. No peace, no sleep. Let's stay the course. Let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Anywhere. Maxine Waters isn't just any member of Congress. The Daily Beast calls her, quote, a folk hero. BuzzFeed describes her as the unchallenged new face of the Democratic Party. And indeed she is. She's also a self-described civil rights leader, which makes it a little weird to see her demanding that certain people be denied public accommodations. Sorry, we don't serve your kind at the lunch counter. That's exactly what she is saying. And she said it again yesterday. I stand by my speech in saying that the protests have already started. They're probably going to continue. The message of all this is clear. The left no longer considers its political opponents fellow citizens or even human. How long before they start openly calling for something bad to happen to those opponents? Well, in the case of Maxine Waters, it won't be the first time. In 1992, Waters cheered as racist mobs burned Los Angeles. As she put it at the time, riot is the voice of the unheard. When Reginald Denny was dragged from his truck and nearly murdered for the color of his skin, beaten in the head with a cinder block on camera, Waters championed his attackers. She partied with them after their trial. Maxine Waters has a record of endorsing mob violence. Everyone in Washington knows that. Democrats don't care. To his credit, Chuck Schumer did call Waters' most recent remarks, quote, not American. Good for him. But hardly anyone else said anything. Nancy Pelosi blamed Donald Trump for what Waters said. That was a theme. Stop hitting me, they said as they threw the first punch. I feel that we are in pre-Nazi Germany. The, the stages of things that are occurring on a daily basis, the obfuscation, the lies, the totalitarian behavior is shocking and horrendous. Yeah. And we have to be vigilant. They follow the exact pattern that Hitler has. He is evil. He is evil. And the thing is, I thought, oh, he'll come in and he won't really know because he's not that smart. He doesn't, you know, he'll just do a showmanship thing. But he's evil. This is about racism. 
This is pure and simple racism. That's all this is. The people who support him are frightened to death of this country becoming uh, the browning of America. Something interesting has happened. As progressives become more authoritarian and less tolerant, they seem more convinced that they're fighting actual Nazis rather than their fellow Americans with whom in the scheme of things they have only relatively mild political differences. The more they accuse the administration of extremism, the more extreme they become. And that's not surprising because once you decide that the people who disagree with you are Nazis, everything is allowed. Why wouldn't you threaten them in restaurants or burn their houses down or who knows? This could very well end in tragedy. You start talking like this and you don't know where it's going to go. Some progressives seem to welcome all that. Quentin James, who's the head of a political action committee that supports Democrats, recently announced that those calling for calm are, quote, accomplices of the current administration. Accomplices? This is the language of total war. It's scary. It has no place in politics. We're heading towards something awful. And the only people who can stop it are the adults on the left. And there are still some. Democratic members of Congress, entertainment figures, religious leaders, media chieftains like Jeff Zucker at CNN or Andy Lack at NBC. They're silent now, cowering and complicit in all of this, but the country badly needs them to cool the rhetoric and rein in the mob. No more Nazi talk on their TV channels. No more screaming at people in restaurants. There's a point of no return, and we are approaching it, and we need their help to pull back. Why, well, you're going to pull those pistols and whistle Dixie.